Now, you might know the news about a Royal Navy F-35B Lightning II from the UK's HMS Prince of Wales making an emergency landing at the International Airport in Kerala on the night of June 14, after encountering hydraulic issues and running low on fuel. It diverted to a pre-designated emergency airfield in Kerala, landing safely at 9.28 p.m. IST with coordination from the Indian Air Force and civilian ATC. The jet was secured in Bay 4 under CISF Guard. British Royal Navy technicians arrived that night by helicopter to begin repairs, but the hydraulic issues persisted. By June 20, officials said the jet might need to be flown back to its carrier or a maintenance facility via military transport. During its stay, the Indian airport supported the UK crew with food, lodging, and ground handling. The most bizarre part? At the time of making this video, the fighter is still stranded in India, marking 10 straight days on Indian soil. Now, let's get to the juicy part, shall we? What did India get out of this situation? Did India just get a goldmine for Anka? In short, yes. Now, I'll be honest, what comes next is a confirmed fact, but it's an informed breakdown based on visuals, timelines, and design logic. It's speculation, yes, but not wild guesses. Before I start, let's talk about what India is capable of when it comes to fighter jet manufacturing. Currently, India can build heavy 4.5 Gen fighter jets, both single and twin engine. But it has no experience building a fifth Gen fighter, although its scientists have extensively gathered know-how to build one. But the first prototype, whenever it rolls out, will be filled with flaws and bugs, something even the F-35 went through. Now that the British F-35 has landed in India, most people will overlook this. But India just got a first-hand gold mine on the most advanced fighter jet in the world. You see, British officials didn't hand over the F-35 to India to freely inspect internal systems, things like avionics, mission computers, radar modes, stealth materials, engine internals, and electronic warfare systems. These are physically sealed and software encrypted. Accessing them requires specialized tools, and if done incorrectly, it can trigger tamper detection logs that violate international protocol, risking serious diplomatic backlash. And to be clear, India would never do that to a comprehensive strategic partner. That might also be the reason the British chose India for the emergency landing. But what India could theoretically observe are some of the most important external features of a stealth jet, the kind of features so secretive and protected that even wannabe versions, like China's fifth-gen fighters, still struggle to perfect them. The British were stuck. The aircraft wasn't moved, wasn't covered. India did offer hangar space, but the British politely declined, so the jet sat in open view for several days. And it's not because the British were suspicious of India. It's because the F-35 is tightly regulated by the US. Even after being sold to countries like the UK, the US still controls the transfer and exposure of its high-end tech. By keeping it outdoors in India, the UK signals to the US that they have nothing to hide. The Indians didn't get any unauthorized access, it's all sitting in the open on the tarmac. A hangar is a double-edged sword. Sure, it protects the jet from the weather, but it also limits visual surveillance. It makes it easier for unauthorized personnel to get close unnoticed. And it removes the jet from the public eye, which makes any tampering accusations hard to verify or disprove. By keeping the jet outside, the British not only help themselves, but also help India avoid further scrutiny. If the jet had been kept in a hangar, the US audit would have asked the UK. What happened in that enclosed space? Was the jet accessed? Was it scanned? And to that, the British would have no solid answer. Now, the jet has been sitting under the Indian sun, and that alone turns it into a live thermal study lab. Even without touching the internals, just observing the F-35 in real-world lighting, humidity, and temperature. India can study angle theory and RAM behavior. It can take hundreds of photos from different angles and lighting setups to build a stealth profile database, then compare it to AMCA's projected radar signature, and adjust shaping or coating thickness based on how the F-35 disperses light and heat. 
It helps calibrate Indian infrared search and track systems to detect stealth aircraft better. Even ground-based IR sensors or electro-optical systems could be used to build a signature model. This helps India fine-tune detection algorithms, simulate tracking in hot environments, and refine future IRST and missile seekers. Watching how the F-35's coating responds to dust, UV, and humidity? Priceless, especially for DRDO teams working on RAM. Observing which external panels are accessed or avoided, where the wiring ports are located, and how things are placed, all help India design the AMCA for better serviceability, without compromising stealth. And remember, India isn't a tech-deprived nation. It has a space agency that built a satellite capable of detecting extreme UV light from a galaxy 9.3 billion light-years away. Airports are equipped with military-grade thermal cameras. These can be used to study how heat builds up and dissipates from RAM coatings because some RAM dissipates heat unevenly, which affects how long it holds a thermal signature after exposure to the sun or engine heat. The F-35B's lift fan and swiveling nozzle create distinct heat patterns. These create thermal hotspots around the rear fuselage, ventral exhaust areas, and the lift fan doors, though those weren't used while the jet was parked. The electro-optical targeting system sits under the nose, behind a sapphire glass window, a heat-resistant and durable material. It's designed to minimize IR reflection and resist solar heating to avoid detection or sensor distortion. Studying how that electro-optical targeting system window responds to solar heating might reveal how well it stays thermally neutral, important for IR counter-detection. That said, unless India had very high-end optics, subtle changes would be hard to quantify. But India has optical zoom cameras, multispectral and hyperspectral sensors, even civilian-grade sensors can pick up panel lines, seams, fasteners, and material differences across the skin. That's useful for RAM and composite analysis, including lens coatings and emission characteristics. India can't bounce radar off the F-35 that would trigger alarms or diplomatic trouble. But remember, stealth geometry is mostly about edge alignment, serrated panels, diverterless intakes, canted surfaces, and smooth blending. All of that is visually observable and can be used to validate India's own stealth models. India is already using similar geometry in the AMCA, Gada QCAV, and Tejas MK2. This F-35 becomes a real-world data point. They can't measure actual RCS here, but even modeling the shape helps. Landing gear and bays were visible while taxiing or during repair checks. That tells a lot about materials, cooling ducts, hydraulic layouts, and more. India could have observed vent locations, panel logic, and maintenance designs, all useful for AMCA or TED-BF. If the F-35B landed while still hot, or if engine checks were done while parked, thermal sensors could detect hot spots, residual heat, and how the body dissipates heat. Even being towed at idle might show engine shielding and cooling behavior. India could have used Su-30 IRSD, ground-based sensors, or even thermal drones for this. So yes, there's a chance that India is capitalizing on this opportunity. And remember, intelligence doesn't always mean espionage. Sometimes, it's just smart observation. Now, there's a counterpoint. This isn't the first time the F-35 landed in India. Two F-35s had already landed earlier this year for the Aero India show. But those jets were surrounded by strict security, American military guards, rope barriers, no close-up photos, and no panel access. Now take a look at this photo. This time, the fighter is under constant surveillance by Central Industrial Security Force personnel, and as you can see, they're standing extremely close to the aircraft. Now ask yourself, if a guard can get that close, wouldn't it be possible, even unintentionally, for someone to capture high-resolution images of seams, surface textures, RAM wear, or sensor housings. Not saying India exploited that. But when a jet sits exposed for days, in broad daylight, and with security this close, passive observation becomes practically unavoidable. And let's be real, India doesn't need to violate protocols. Just having proximity, good optics, and patience is enough to gather useful data. 
Those came for diplomatic and marketing purposes, a controlled PR event to showcase the platform for potential export. From a distance, India could observe the airframe, nozzles, landing gear, and maybe radar dome shaping. But that was a polished showroom demo, protected, rehearsed, and controlled. This emergency landing? That's real life. And this time, it stayed way longer. Here's the final argument and it might be a surprise, or maybe not. What if India doesn't even care that much? Think about it, while well, everyone's speculating about India secretly learning from the F-35, the truth is, it's very unlikely India would have gained access to its internal systems anyway. And as for the external aspects, like RAM coding, surface shaping, heat distribution, stealth paneling, India already has that knowledge. Tejas Mark 1, A already uses radar absorbent materials. DRDO has been working on indigenous stealth coatings for years. Platforms like AMCA and Gaddock ECAV are already deep into prototype development, and India has been investing heavily in stealth shaping, infrared signature control, and RCS reduction techniques. So, it's not like India is seeing stealth tech for the first time. In fact, it's possible that India already has simulation models and lab data that go far beyond what you can observe passively from an F-35 parked on a tarmac. So, maybe this wasn't some gold mine. Maybe it was just a nice bonus of a visual reference point. But in the grand scheme of things, India's already on track.